In this video, we present language models as zero-shot trajectory generators, an investigation into how large language models, or LLMs, can be used to generate end-effective trajectories for a robot arm to complete everyday manipulation tasks in a zero-shot manner. In recent years, related works on language-conditioned robot manipulation have shown the benefits of leveraging the general world knowledge and code-writing capabilities of LLMs as part of a robot's planning pipeline. Coupled with vision models to be operable in the real world, they have made significant strides towards generalizable robotic systems, which can understand and carry out various manipulation tasks given a user instruction. However, they have, until now, all assumed the existence of numerous auxiliary components, such as predefined motion primitives, which have to be manually engineered to carry out a particular action or skill, in-context examples, which involve writing out and providing specific cases and answers to the LLM and therefore risk losing generalizability. External trajectory optimizers, such as cost and reward functions used to evaluate randomly sampled trajectories along with model predictive control. And robotic specific training data, which can be difficult to obtain in large quantities and with which extensive compute budget is required to pre-train and fine-tune custom vision language models. We, however, investigate if LLMs inherently possess the knowledge to complete various manipulation tasks in a zero-shot manner without any motion primitives, in-context examples, external trajectory optimizers, or need for pre-training or fine-tuning with robotics-specific data. With this in mind, we study whether LLMs can directly predict a zero-shot, a dense sequence of end-effective poses for manipulation tasks. For this, we give the LLM access to only object detection and segmentation vision models, and we design a single task agnostic prompt to be given to the LLM for all tasks without any task specific guidance. The prompt itself is composed of the task description given by the user, as well as details fundamental to all tasks, including functions available for the LLM to call, such as detect object, environment setup and coordinate definitions, and guidance on co generation, planning with step by step reasoning, and collision avoidance. The LLM then generates a high-level natural language step-by-step -step plan, as well as Python code associated with each step, which can be run by a standard Python interpreter. The generated code is used to interface with a pre-trained object detection model and obtain automatically calculated 3D bounding boxes of the queried object from the segmentation maps using camera calibration. With this information, the LLM can generate additional code to execute a sequence of 4D end effector poses on the robot as well as either open gripper or closed gripper commands. After task execution, we use an object tracker to track the segmentation maps over the entire duration of the task. These segmentation maps, along with the task agnostic success detection prompt, are then provided to the LLM to determine whether the task was executed successfully or not. If yes, the user can provide another task for the LLM to execute. If not, then the LLM proceeds to replan the task with an alternative trajectory to execute on the robot. We evaluate the main prompt across 30 real-world language-based manipulation tasks, and some example videos are shown here. And with the full results on the 30 tasks, we reveal for the first time that LLMs do indeed possess an understanding of low-level robot control, sufficient for a range of common tasks, achieving an average success rate of 57.3%. We also investigate which design choices in the main prompt are the most important. By removing certain parts of the main prompt, such as guidance on step-by-step -step reasoning, co-generation and annotation and variable naming, collision avoidance, section headings, the shape of the motion trajectory, object part for interaction, and object approach and trajectory chaining. And we can see that all these prompt variants achieved either worse or equal success rates compared to the full prompt without any ablated components. As additional experiments, we first conduct ablation studies to explore the optimal way for the LLM to output the sequence of end-effect poses. As before, given the full main prompt and the user input command, the LLM first outputs a high-level natural language self-summarization of the trajectory plan. The LLM then generates either code which computes and executes the trajectory directly on the robot, 
or a list of numerical values which need to be passed before being executed. Our investigation shows that outputting code for trajectory generation outperforms predicting the trajectory directly as an explicit list of numerical poses represented as language tokens. We also demonstrate that generating code as opposed to numerical tokens leads to executable outputs more often, with the former resulting in 100% of executable trajectories and the latter 94.3%. For the gripper open or close action, we compare using a binary value, 0 or 1, or explicit functions open gripper or close gripper, and show that the LLM achieves better performance when using explicit functions. Next, we present results on ablation studies conducted to determine which of the currently available LLMs performs best at following instructions outlined in the plot. We see that only GPT-4 and Claw 3 Opus were able to generate code which could be executed 100% of the time, and indeed, they were also the two best performing models in terms of successful task completion. We also investigate if LLMs can detect that a task has failed and subsequently replan an alternative trajectory by analyzing the numerical trajectories of objects recorded during task execution. First, the segmentation maps of the objects are tracked over the entire duration of the task execution. Then, the object poses are calculated using camera calibration for each frame of the task execution. These poses are provided as numerical values to the LLM as part of the success detection prompt. Then, based on its inherent knowledge about the nature of the task and the object poses provided, the LLM determines whether the task was successful or not. If not, it proceeds to generate a summary of the build trajectory and relevant object poses as well as appropriate changes to be applied to the trajectory to complete the task successfully. This information can then be provided to another instance of the LLM to guide it to replan and generate the correct trajectory. Our experiments demonstrate that LLMs can indeed interpret the numerical trajectories of objects to detect successful and unsuccessful episodes autonomously and initiate replanning to rectify any failures. This leads to a small improvement in the overall performance with a task completion success rate of 63.8% when including replanned trajectories compared to 57.3% without replanning. In this example, the robot is tasked with picking up the bowl. The LLM attempts to grasp the bowl at its centroid, leading to task failure. As the pose of the bowl has not changed during the execution of the task, the LLM recognizes that the task has failed and proposes a new sequence of actions for the robot to retry. After the second failure has been identified, the LLM proposes yet another sequence of actions and finally succeeds in grasping and picking up the bowl. With the pose of the bowl now changed in accordance with the given task, the LLM identifies that the task has been executed successfully. To provide an insight into the main failure modes of the main prompt on the 13 manipulation tasks, we group the errors into five categories. Gripper goal pose prediction error, high level task planning error, wrongly coding the trajectory generation function definition, object detection error by the vision model, and camera calibration error due to noisy camera data. We can see here that nearly half of the failure cases can be attributed to the more difficult task of predicting accurate gripper poses, compared to high-level task planning or coding trajectory generation functions. Finally, we compare our zero-shot prompt to the prompt structure set out in Coda's policies, which is closest to our work. However, Coda's policies relies on predefined primitives and in-context examples, which can hinder generalizability. This can be seen on the left, where we compare the performance of the original Coda's policies prompt on the 30 tasks against our zero-shot prompt. And on the right, where we see the success rate on unseen tasks increasing as we append more in-context examples to the original Coda's policies prompt. But even with 20 additional in-context examples, we see that its unseen task performance is still lower and that of our zero shot prompt which does not contain any in context examples. Thank you very much for watching and please check out the full paper, code, videos, prompts and example LLM outputs on our project page.